Are we live? Are we here? Hey, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Boy Please Whatever podcast. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more time to log in. It let me know in the comments because I can't see shit but myself. So I need to know if you guys are here or not so we can begin. This boy in my DM say I'm pretty. I like the little clip. Hey, Ridge, what's up, Derek? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Go ahead and get the preliminaries out of the way. If you saw, again, we are doing advertisement at Boy Please Whatever. Uh, so, you know, if you want me to go ahead and uh, promote your business for you or whatever you want to do, OnlyFans, whatever type of shit you need, let me know. I'm doing at least two weeks. It's $50 every additional week after that. It's $25. So email me at boypleasewhatever23 at gmail.com for payment information. And hey, y'all, I just want to welcome everybody again to the Boy Please Whatever podcast, your favorite podcast, the only podcast that matters. Right now, we're streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. You can also catch me the podcast audio streaming at Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, um, what is iHeartRadio Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Podcasts. Basically, everywhere podcasts are available. So, yeah, let's dig in. Uh, for those um, that are on social media often, for some reason, I'm just finding this out today. Those assholes who beat and killed Tyree Nichols pled not guilty as if we didn't see them do what they did i think that's fucking ridiculous uh and I, I know i haven't really spoke about it a lot on the show because i really hate to even really think about it i really i was shocked that i was able to watch the video too like, like a lot of shit this is too much trauma for me but um i know i haven't said much about my thoughts and my feelings on it and that was purposeful but once i saw that these fucking idiots pled not guilty my Verdict would be it's electric. Yeah, I think they deserve to fucking fry. So, yeah, uh, I saw that. And also on the uh, what else I looking at today? I saw K Michelle. Uh, it was on Instagram. She said that she um, has ran through. Hey, <laughs> Chris. She said she has ran through a hundred personal assistants in her career. Uh, and I think she fired the last one for not being able to hang up a TV. Hey, Charles, you didn't miss anything. I'm just talking, uh, rambling right now, just random shit. But yeah, she said she's gone through a hundred, um, personal assistants and she fired the last one because they weren't able to hang up a TV. And I think that's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I know this right there. I think that's fucking ridiculous. Um, Hey, Michelle, you have to realize that you're the problem here, honey. Um, first of all, if I was a personal assistant for a, a celebrity, the last thing I would think I would have to do was mount a fucking TV. I think my job would be to go find someone to do that for you, but not do it myself. But anyway, what I want to show you guys as well is um, this photo here. I know the live is a little behind, so I'm going to give you guys a little time. Uh, this photo here is um, Jonathan Majors. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, uh, well, my first time seeing him was on HBO's um, Lovecraft Country on HBO Max. It was a really, really good show. They only had one um, one season, but it was really, 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 really good. So this is the photo of Jonathan Majors, and they're trying to say that, uh, I guess, the culture, I won't say black culture because black culture is the one finding the issue. Well, this crazy black culture is the one finding the issue with it. But they're trying to say that Jonathan Majors is ain't he fine, Kathy? Jesus Christ. Um said that we are trying to emasculate the black man. And of course, we've all heard this time and time and time and time again by the um it was a really good show, wasn't it, Damaris? By the whole tip and the woke and the black the super straight black pride community always got something to fucking say about everything and i think he looks fucking amazing on this photo and nothing about this photo reads gay to me um <laughs> nothing about this photo reads gay to me it just basically i mean it's it's fashion and i saw the inspiration came from like an anime cartoon so i don't see a problem chris i think it's the titty lift in the picture I don't see a t that man is fine. I don't give a fuck. 
how he presented himself. I think he looks amazing. The last thing I can do to his face. I like his nose too. A lot of people try to say he was ugly. I think he has really rich black African features, but I think the man looks fucking amazing. But that's not my point. The uh, people are trying to say it was all over Twitter, at least on my Twitter feed, that um, we were busy trying to emasculate the black men. They also compared his photo to the photo of Rihanna. And I believe, I don't know if Rihanna's married or not, uh, her baby daddy or something like that. Um, Carrying the baby while she's on the beach impregnated. They were trying to say, like, you know, it's always people trying to make black women look strong and the man look weak as if black women aren't strong. Uh, and in my opinion, I do think black men suffer with, um, I, and I, well, I think black men are in an identity crisis any fucking way because let me get him off my screen. Cause y'all ain't say I'm this fine, baby. Y'all don't say I'm this fine, <laughs> but yeah, um, his name is Jonathan Majors, Reggie, but yeah, I think black men suffer from an identity crisis anyway, because it's always them wanting to be. And I'm saying them because I don't think I suffer with one. But I see a lot of black men always trying to be so extra macho and everything is like as if being or seeming gay is the worst possible thing. And I think most crime is com- uh, created, uh, is most crime is committed by men because we are not taught how to really deal with emotion. And I always say so many black men, they are out here shooting and killing and getting mad and you want to shoot a woman because she didn't give you her number or you want to fight a guy because he stepped on your tennis shoe. I always think that, um, I think that's because we aren't taught how to deal with our feelings. And I always say most fights and murders happen because a black man's feelings got hurt. So, um, I just, I really hate to see that most, a lot of black men are so, afraid to really express themselves through fashion or dance because in black communities we know so many black men that can flip over a fucking 10 foot fence but they rather flip and not 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 knocking the bill street flippers but they rather flip on bill street or flip in the neighborhood or flip at school and gymnasium versus going ahead and trying to shit get a trillion scholarship or if you want to go on a larger scale trying to like be an olympic gymnast like it's so much shit the black men are like we we are blessed with so many talents that we don't really uh, navigate through them because we don't want to seem gay. There are a lot of straight men that can sing like a fucking canary, but because they they rather rap, you know, or they don't want to sing, or they're in church, they rather play drums and they can sing better than the whole choir. I think that shit is crazy to me. Um, if you know you're not gay, why can't you hang with it? And let's see. so. I'm I'm going to get to that, Amy, too. Thank you for saying that. Uh, But, yeah, that's my whole thing. Like someone said in the comments, it's toxic masculinity. But my question, because I feel like a lot of straight men that I know try to impress women. And I want to have a discussion with you guys because sometimes in my experience, in my experience, that's why I said scholarship, Chris. Um, In my experience, a lot of black women – and not all, I don't want to, I'm not going to put you guys all in the box, but just for the sake of conversation tonight, a lot of black women don't really enjoy the whole black and gay experience as it comes from when it's coming from a man. And I say that because a lot of them, I've, I've known so many black, well, I know a lot of black gay men that has had like when they're coming out their their parents or not the parents their mom acts a donkey but at the same time they have gay best friends or gay good judies or gay guys they meet on the community choir scene or at work or whatever so a child seeing that and knowing that okay my mama best friend i'm just gonna say Ernest. my mama best friend Ernest, gay she loves Ernest. Ernest been around my entire life and but the moment i come out i'm getting put out so I feel like a lot of the times women, and I know my my audience is most mostly women, so I'm going to ask you guys, like, is it really an issue for you guys when it comes to being around or befriending gay men, especially when they're not doing your hair or not giving you the tea on your boyfriends or not giving you fashion advice? Like, is that an issue? And if it is, 
don't be ashamed to say it in the comments. We're going to, that's the point of the show. I wanted to talk about it because it's hard enough being black and being a black man and putting on top of that, being a black gay man, it's a lot. So a lot of gay men, like in my experience, I was more comfortable hanging with girls because I didn't have to be overly masculine, overly macho, trying to prove myself. I found myself fighting an awful lot when I was around little boys. And even to this day as a grown man, I still have a bit of anxiety going into a barbershop. Because not because I'm uncomfortable with who I am, but just I just never know what type of conversations is going to happen and if I'm going to have to get to arguing when I get in here and shit like that. So, like, you know, I know a lot of a lot of women love us, you know, but sometimes I, I know for a fact that I've come across a lot of women who have male hairstylists. But the moment they have a gay relative, it's like completely different. So it's like, do you really fuck with me or are you fucking with me because I'm providing you a service or I'm fun to be around or I'm just a cute accessory to have to show off to your friends? So I'm going to give you guys a little time to respond to that because I know the live again is kind of de- delayed. So, hold on. Never. Gay guys are fun, and it's unfair you can't be yourself, but I do feel like if you're around your straight friends, it should be boundaries, if that makes sense. So, Amy, let me know what kind of boundaries should be set. Cause I'm, I'm, and I really appreciate you commenting. Are you saying they haven't been delivered or just pretend that they have been? No, I'm saying, like, if I'm – and we're going to get to relationships as well to one, but I'm saying just, like, me, for instance. I've, I've come across a lot of women who are like, I really like you. But I had another friend in the past who was really feminine, and I've heard people say to me, like, oh, he just do a little bit too much for me. So it's like, do you fuck with us or do you fuck with us? Because I don't, what I'm not going to be is a pick me gay because I may present myself more masculine than the next guy. So it's like, it's almost like when people say things like that, like, oh, I'm so glad you don't carry a purse, or I'm so glad you're a man, I feel like you're tolerating me in a sense, and it also makes me feel like, basically what I just said, you're tolerating me, so I'm like, do I really want to be around you? Because it shouldn't matter how I present myself. Are you my friend because of my, you know what I'm saying? Because I am who I am because of my heart or what, or how I present myself in public. Like, is it an embarrassment to you? What is it about a more feminine gay man than a more masculine presenting gay man that causes this divide in what you will and will not tolerate? Elaborate on that, Chris. I feel like this shouldn't be a gay man issue. It should be a wife's issue. Just like a gay man marry me. Just like us gay men don't like when gay men marry a woman. But that's the thing, though, Reggie. As far as as far as that's concerned, I feel like a lot of us don't appreciate, or I ain't gonna say appreciate. A lot of society will not acknowledge the fact that men are bisexual. I know women that have no problem saying, oh, I let the bitch eat me out. And, you know, and her husband may not care. She'll say it to her friends. But if a guy says, hey, I I fooled, I fooled around with a man before. And a woman here, he's automatically labeled as gay. I, You know, and this is something that I think everybody has seen happen. Everybody knows. I just feel like what's the, what's the divide? What's the difference? Is a man consider less a man to you because he slept with a man before because it's definitely something that I've seen appreciated I want to say I won't say reverence but I've seen appreciated or just ignored when it comes to women I hate being the token gay back in the day it was cool because you felt accepted but now I see the bigger picture and I don't deal with people like that and that's my thing um that's my thing uh Demarius I feel like when you get a little older, it feels like we're like it feels good to be accepted. But when you get older, it almost feels like that you a nigga, but you you not one of those niggas type of thing. And it all is the same to me, Chris. I don't agree with that theory. D. Everyone has preference. If you don't wear a purse and they like that, that's their preference. But my thing is, they we're we're put in the same boat. You get what I'm saying? Because if you don't like gay people. If you have a problem with a man wearing a purse, what is it? That's that's what I'm trying to get to. Like, what is it about them? What were you? What are what are your feelings? Because I've always said that, like the Jay Z song called, I think it was called "Still Nigga." 
house nigga, field nigga, black nigga, all that shit is you're still, we're still in the same boat. And in turn, when you get people who feel like, oh, I'm a masculine, a masculine presenting gay, you in turn are perpetuating the same stereotypes that your homegirls have towards gay guys. And I've seen this. You have church queen think they're better than the club queens, but the club queens are really out in there freer. And you have the church girls who are out here dating girls and marrying, marrying women just to keep up that facade. And when you're hanging with a woman who has a problem with a gay man, I feel like I can't fuck with you because this is like me hanging with white people and they have a problem with a black man, a certain type of a black person. I may have a cousin like that. So if I might, I have cousins who, who gang bang and sell drugs and drink and are loud and all of that. So I can't sit here and allow you to say, Oh, you're not one of them. Yes, the fuck I am. So that's my point of, you know, of saying that people really do have issues with boundaries. I have more, I have had more straight friends these days and I try to bring them around gay friends and it just seems like three drinks in to get disrespectful. So now I have to think twice about overlapping circles. And that's, and that's another thing too, Derek, I feel like on a double-edged sword as well, a lot of gay guys feel like just because I'm friends with a straight guy, he can't authentically be just my friend. He has to want something from me. So I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, there are very toxic opinions about women from women about bisexual men. And that's my thing, Sharice. I feel like a lot of women, because I had a cousin – I was talking to her and um, I was telling her I went to a bar. This woman was looking at me and she was like, are you straight? Now, she was looking at me and I was like, what's up? And she was like, I got a question. And I said, yes, I'm gay. I went ahead and told her like, yes, I'm gay because I already knew what the fuck she wanted. So she kept talking to me and like I kept like seeing her stare at me. And she was like, are you bisexual? And I was like, no, I'm gay. So she asked me to kiss her later on in the club. So I, and then we were at the bar. So I gave her a kiss. It was just fun. We was at the birthday party. We was at the same birthday party. So I kissed her. I felt nothing, of course. Oh, and my cousin I was telling this story to, she was like, women wanting to kiss you still? Because I made a comment saying, I can still fuck a bitch if I wanted to. And she was like amazed. And it made me think like, you know, I know my cousin loves me, but it made me also think like, you would have a problem knowing that your man touched another man before or thought another man was attractive. So I feel like a lot of women think that way. They just don't want to admit it that they feel that way. So I just want to know, like, what is the issue? Because a lot of women out here are creeping and no one cares. No one knows. A lot of men think it's a dream. You know, they love to have two men with two women in the bed together with them. But a woman, as freaky as she may be, when it's come to a threesome, she'd rather eat vagina (laughs) and her husband's okay with it. Versus her husband touching another man to them, that's disgusting. They don't want. They don't want to do that. And I think that that ideology also perpetuates the the huge DL community that we have. I don't really blame a lot of men for being DL. I think a lot of most of them, we could say, safe to say, they're bisexual. It's just because of it's what how it's how they do things. I think that causes the problem. But we also have to look back at ourselves and be like, okay. And are we creating spaces for men to say, to comfortably say, I like men and women, black men. But, D, you used to pound pussy, though. So, yeah. I never pounded pussy. I held the base of my penis and tried to stick it in a little bit. And, yeah, I don't like, um, thank you, Amy. No, D, when I first saw you, I didn't think you were. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. But, yeah, um, no, I didn't, Chris. I, uh, I've, I don't even know if you want to consider this sex with a woman. My weenie was soft, 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 like a fucking little Debbie Twinkie. So, yeah, I didn't. I tried. And I tried because I was trying not to. I ain't going to say trying not to be gay because I knew I was gay. I was hoping that I could at least have sex with the woman to kind of mask it. But it didn't work for me because I'm more of a mental person when it comes to having sex. So if I don't really want to fuck with you, I just can't touch you. Um, and no, and I, I admire and I respect a woman, but keep that vagina away from me, baby. This is very true. Women still find me super attractive and know I'm gay, but if a straight man even had a gay friend, they'd turn their nose up. So thank you, Demarius. That's my question for the night. So women, would you be comfortable with your man being friends with a gay man, whether they grew up together 
became a coworker or started off as coworkers or maybe my barber or whatever the case, would you guys be comfortable with your man having a gay male friend? The body ratio is real. We have to know what to put you. And I think society has created two. I'm going to talk about this while, while you guys are commenting. Uh, society has created this this very narrow path. Either you're a boy or a girl, you're a man or a woman, you're straight or you're gay. And that and it's crazy that we have so many differences and people have so many different feelings and so many places to do shit. Like we have to sneak around and do certain things like, oh, they're swingers. That's taboo. No, the fuck is not. People like to fuck. You know, people like to people. Some people are just attracted to what they're attracted to. But we try so bit so hard to fit into these two boxes. It creates so much fucking like so many gray areas and so much confusion. So. No, Keisha, I wasn't good at it. Uh, this one girl wrote me. I was in the 10th grade. She gave me head. It was decent. Uh, she started riding me, and she was making a lot of noise because I got a big weenie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she was making a lot of noise, and um, I made her stop. I made her stop. Um, so, yeah, I, I knew then. When I got to college, I tried it again. Kissing, hugging, all this stuff. And at once she pulled it, once she whipped that pussy out, baby, it was like psh, limp dick city population one. Hell yeah, I'm comfortable with it. It shows how comfortable they are with their sexuality, the homophobic. Thank you, cousin. And that's what I, I, I thank you for that comment because that's how I feel. It's the motherfuckers that's uncomfortable with gay men or feel like they can't be in a room with gay men. You the one. That's giving me the eyes across the room, and you the one gonna end up getting ate up. I will understand because I understand it's not contagious. Honestly, it's better to allow people to be who they are. A friend being gay doesn't make you view them differently. Yeah, I feel like it's much better to like allow people to be who they are, but I think it's a lot of women like I don't know if y'all noticed, but so every time someone is like exposed online, like on Facebook. You will, you will go to this post, the post is viral. I don't know if it just happens to me, but every time I would click on a post, it'll show, if I'm scrolling and see the post, it'll show people that I know in their comments. So you see people that get exposed online, and then you will see your friends commenting, right? You will see what they said and make you click on it. And a lot of women that I know, that I've probably grown up with and went to school with, they say so much shit. Uh, they say so much negative shit about DL men, and I get it. I'm sure it's very heartbreaking, but honey, the signs were there. I can see a, uh, I can see a, I can say that I can see a gay man coming from a mile away, bitch, with one eye open. So I just feel like, uh, and not, and again, I'm not blaming, I'm not victim shaming, but at the same time, girl, you knew. But I feel like that is kind of disheartening to see people that you know, that you hug, and that you, you know, you break bread with or you grew up with and when some shit like that happens you see this don't these faggot motherfuckers these dookie chasers it's like to see all of this all of this um negative stuff coming out of their mouths and these people that you see you know you know what i'm saying you shake up with them you hug them you see them and it's the whole time it's like in the back of their mind oh that's how you feel you know women say they're comfortable but i was thinking in the back of their mind they're not i want to know is it the gay guy they don't trust with your husband. But, yeah, I, that's the thing. I feel like, but my point is that, like, you can feel how you want to feel, but I just think you have to be careful of the shit you're saying and that you're asking of, like, your friends to put up with and to allow. Like, I'm not about to be a pick-me gay. I'm not about to sit here and allow you to talk down other gay guys because they're more feminine presenting. And I'm not, and I'm not going to, I don't want to be around you so fucking bad that you feel like I'm finna do something to your guy or, you know what I'm saying? Or you allowing your nigga to say certain shit around me because at the end of the day, I'm finna pop off. And I've, I've seen, I've seen women who go to church and like a straight guy get the shout and they, they going to fuck up. I love to see a real man, praise God. And you sitting across the table from him at brunch, like, bitch, what am I a fucking Ken doll? Like, you know, I just, I, it's just a lot of shit that I feel like we uh, deal with. And that we put up with is black gay men when we're befriend, be, befriending black women. And again, this is not all. I have some very, very, very genuine conversations and friendships with black women. Don't get me wrong, but I just I've always felt like this, and I've had a black woman tell this to me that black women don't really fuck with y'all like that. 
And of course, you know, it's a new day and time. More, more minds are being open, but I just want people to be a bit more cognizant when they're saying certain things. Yeah, and that's the thing, Shine. Like, if you hang around a motherfucker enough, you're going to see exactly how they feel. And, like, you know, and especially you get them drunk and get them mad. It's like, when I'm, if I'm friends with a woman, I'm not about to be, I'm not, I'm not about to, like, like one of my best friends, uh, she, three of my best friends are women. And if I get to arguing with them, I'm not going to call them bitches and hoes and sluts and things like that. But I've seen this. I've been around this. And you get into it with a woman who may not be your friend. She may just be your client. You know, she calling you. She want her hair done. She asking you how this shit look. You may go out for drinks with this bitch every once in a while. But when Mad Day show up, you all kind of punks and faggots and this my gay friend. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of shit that we deal with. It's a lot of shit. Now, you know, they be acting a fool where I shout. I know a dude to be flat out screaming like a woman. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't want anyone around me that what, that doesn't want to be around me. I don't have any friends with my friends' partners. It's cute, but not necessary if they are worried about it. Yeah, and I'm like that, too. I don't speak to I, – I got friends that got kids, bitch. I swear to you, those kids probably don't know my name. What's up, Ant? Yeah, this, I, I know May Man. Y'all know Anthony. I know May Man. But, yeah, I feel like, you know, it's just a lot of people that feels weird about it. And I feel like lesbianism is a little bit more accepted in the gay community. Um, you know, I feel like when it's just harder being a gay man. So when you find someone that gives you that refuge, it's almost like, bitch, do I got to watch this bitch or see? You know what I'm saying? I need to know she's really down for me. She really like me because I feel like a lot of the times, you allow it. See, like my thing is, if you allow a motherfucker to say certain things and you don't check them for me in my absence, I can't fuck with you. Like my mama, I have to sit her down sometimes because a motherfucker say some, 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 like they experience some gay hate shit. And baby, Lord's on top of their ass, like on their ass, like back pockets. And it's almost like, mama, I'm a grown ass man. I got this, but I, I fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? I got friends I know that got my motherfucking back. You're not finna say what you wanna say about me. And that's the thing. Like a lot of shit changes when people know. And again, I, I like Amy said, I've gotten people I've been around that may not know I'm gay. I don't know how, but you know, hey, I, whatever. But I don't, I don't wear not knowing I'm gay as a badge of honor. That don't mean that ain't you telling me. Oh, you cool though. You know what I'm saying? Cause you ain't real like you ain't like the other ones. That shit don't mean none to me. That don't impress me. I'm not trying to be. I'm just being myself. I'm not trying to be a pick me gay. I don't give a fuck about you liking me. I have a coworker that said that to me and I was like, well, he was like, see, I fuck with you because you know, you ain't purse carrying and you ain't hey girl. And bitch, you ain't caught me on the right day, baby. You get me around a bunch of my friends, bitch. I'm from the queen the fuck out and we going to have a good time. But like I told him, regardless of how I show up, what you're going to motherfucking do is respect me. And we're coworkers. We're not friends. And I feel like a lot of people put themselves in people business and you too motherfucking passionate about shit that don't really mean nothing to you. Be friends. Like Derek said, be friends who you want to be friends with. And it's okay to not like somebody, but you're not going to wear me around like a motherfucking accessory. And I just, I don't know. But uh, that was my whole thing. Like, I just feel like it's so much homophobia in the gay community. And again, don't introduce me as no gay friend. Like, I mean, I had to get on one of my friends about that. Um, you might be watching, but I had to get on one of my friends about that. I was like, stop fucking doing it. If you're uncomfortable being around me, we ain't got no business being friends. I'm not your motherfucking gay friend. I'm your friend that happens to be gay. Like, <laughs> this, I just, I do not like that. I think they're so fucking disrespectful, and I feel like people try to always cover their tracks. If you uncomfortable, bitch, be uncomfortable. Like, don't include me in this shit. I'm not finna be your friend that only comes to your house. I'm not finna be your friend that gotta meet you outside. Bitch, if we, if we kicking it, if I say, hey, nigga, let's go to the bar, that's the fuck we finna do. We finna go to the bar. And I feel like with women, um, that's the thing, like, I don't, hold on, Nicole, because someone was asking you a question. No, man, no, Nicole, you're not supposed to say this is my gay friend, because why does it matter? What if I say, what if I say, this is my friend who used to be on cocaine. This is my crackhead friend, y'all. This is a drunk bitch who can't, ain't going to make it home tonight. Or this is my friend who, uh, boyfriend, beating the shit out them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has nothing to do with me meeting you. That has nothing to do with me meeting you. I am not your motherfucking gay friend. I am just, 
I'm May May. I'm Dietrich. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I don't introduce my friends like, or this is my coworker who, it took me three months to train this bitch. Like, it has nothing to do with anything. This is my cock ass friend, Nicole. <laughs> Nicole ain't cock ass, yeah, but I'm just saying. This is my cock ass friend, Nicole. Like, bitch, what the fuck that got to do with the pricing team in China? It's just, you know what I'm saying? I just, that's not a part of being, I'm, being gay is not a part of like Dietrich at his core. I just happen to like fucking men. You happen to like men as well. Like, you know, it just, it's crazy. It's just it's just telling my business because like what if I ain't want these hoes to know I'm gay? Even though I don't, everybody who know me know I don't give two shits. I just feel like, you know, I'm wondering. This is my daughter Nikki Day. You know, <laughs> just say my name because it, it just I think it causes a lot of confusion and friction because like imagine being a little gay boy and you playing around like you walk up. And you meet a group of kids, like, your mama take you somewhere, like, go play. So, you know what I'm saying? All you want to do, all that's on your mind is play. Like, I'm a little fucking boy. I want to play I want to play dodgeball, too. And the first thing you hear a nigga say, that nigga gay. That just kills your whole motherfucking spirit. Y'all know how many times it has happened to me. And that's why I'm so, like, my mouth is so sharp. My tongue, When my tongue is so sharp, and my, like, I'm so quick with the shit. Because I remember the first day I walked into South Side High School. This guy was like, he was, he's wide as this motherfucking table I'm sitting in, y'all. And I walked in the cafeteria. I'm in, it's my first day of high school, bitch, I'm hype. I walk in the cafeteria and he was like, hey, y'all, that nigga that gay as fuck. And I was like, hey, y'all, that nigga that fat in the motherfucker. Because he was just like, what's the purpose of you saying it? You know what I'm saying? You're trying to embarrass me. And it's just like, it's just a lot of trauma that comes with being a little black gay boy. That, <laughs> like my mama, y'all, for instance, when I got a little older, she would always be like, where your girlfriend is it? Your friend, he sure look gay. Well, nah, I ain't gonna say my mama say gay. She, this is how my mama was if I got on her. You sure he ain't no faggot? You sure he ain't no sissy? He sure look gay as hell. And I'm sitting here looking at her like the whole time's my boyfriend. So I'm <laughs> like, girl, what's the tea? So I'm telling my friends, like, this shit, that shit causes trauma. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do? How the fuck I'm telling this woman? Because my mama got to the point, she was like, none of your friends ain't got no girlfriends. And I would say, they ain't got no boyfriends either. I don't know what you're saying. And I would tell my friend one day, like, Lois got one more motherfucking time <laughs> to ask me where my girlfriend is. And I'm going to set this bitch off. <laughs> I was like, I'm finna sit this bitch out because, yeah, because I would, I had to make sure I had got me a job and I had enough money to move out in case of my dad asked the food. But grateful they didn't have the best fucking parents in the world. But it's just a lot of shit that comes with being gay and like, and to deal with the same shit and the same type of people when you get older. It's like, girl, have we not learned any fucking? Ain't you tired, Miss Hilly? Like, have we not learned any motherfucking thing? Nah, Nicole, it's a learning experience. <laughs> Wait, what did you have on as a child playing by? I was feminine, Chris. Like, I grew up in, like, my family is is full of women. Like, both of my great-grandmamas had 16 or 15 kids. My family is full of women, and I've always just been more naturally feminine. I've never been the athletic, muscle-bound, let's go outside, get dirty type of person. I've always wanted to sit in there with the women. I love going to the beauty shop with my mama. Like, it was just the gossip in that motherfucker. I just was comfortable. And I remember my cousins, they started Southside's uh, Pom Pom Squad. And these hoes used to uh, dance in our living room. So, bitch, I want to be a Pom Pom girl, too. You know, it just was, I was around more women, and I was already feminine. Like, I was already feminine. But that was just who I naturally was. Like, I was around my dad. I grew up in the house with my dad. I got damn near 15 fake uncles. So, like, I grew up around my around my dad. We went to the gym every Sunday, played basketball. But it just who I was in my core. No, Chris, that was a facade, baby. I, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little gangster because I'm from South Memphis, but... You know, uh, when I got a little older, I did kind of toughen up a little bit, but it wasn't because I got tired of fighting people. But, you know, I was just, you know, sometimes you might catch Trey Dietrich, and sometimes you might get what's the T, bitch. It just all depends. Yeah, child, and this thing, I ain't never played the field with a bitch now. My cousin said, I remember we were teenagers, and I told you my friend thought she was fine. He was like, oh, okay. Yeah, see, I ain't never played the field with a bitch now. I, um... Uh, if, I brought, if I brought a girl home, she was for fucking presentation purposes only. Hey, mama, this is such and such. They give me about two more years if you ask me the same motherfucking question. 
And there was a thing I liked to dance. Like I liked, I used to like to dance and just be free. I like playing jacks. I didn't want to play basketball. I remember when I played football as a kid, I would be late to my games because I was in the shower. Like, bitch, I got to take a bath. Like, I just did not. Yeah. I just don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I just, I don't know. It's just a lot that comes with just being a kid and being gay and coming out. It's just a whole lot because you don't, you really don't know who's going to love you for you because you've been working so hard, like trying to build this mask. And so you almost forget who the fuck you are, which I think in turn, why we allow certain people to say certain things or we feel like, oh, I'm, I'm in the elite group because I'm not one of those gays. It's almost like a crab in the bear, but the quicker we realize we are more the same, we are all the same. I'm talking to the gay community. We will be a lot better. I don't look down on nobody. I applaud these young bitches. Now, if I say what you're going to, if you're going to do it, do it to perfection. <laughs> my mom said, watch your mouth. me. I told you this before. But if we're going to do it, if you're going to do drag or whatever you're going to do, do it to the best of your ability, but make sure you look like something. That's the only thing. I don't give a fuck about that. Now, I, I will, I'm, I'm still going to check shit out you because it's just the nature of who I am. But, you know what I'm saying, just make sure you're, you're doing it, you know. But I don't look down. I, I applaud these young guys on these major squads now or out here dancing or if you want to be trans or whatever you want to do, like live your motherfucking life for you. Like live your life for you. I just don't. I don't get it. I'm not with the whole, like, I see a lot of women. They enjoy when a man has been found out, like a man who is married to a woman or a man who has had a girlfriend who, like, if not him coming out on his own. It's a whole different thing. When a man is found out, it's like so much hate and so much mean shit is being said versus, Asking questions. Why do we why haven't we created this space where men are comfortable saying, Hey, I enjoy fucking who I want to fuck? I enjoy women. I enjoy men. You know what I'm saying? Why don't why don't we create this space? Like my parents, when my mom was like, you know, we would love you anyway. We love you. We love you. But at the end of the day, like I didn't know that. I thought my love was limited to an extent because I would hear my daddy say crazy ass shit. And I was just like, I'm going to have to fight this nigga one day. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a lot of shit that I think, I'm not saying our parents do it purposely, just because, you know, they learn how to parent just as much as, you know, the next motherfucker. But at the same time, it's like you have to be careful what you're saying and make sure we're creating these spaces so where if if I had kids, if they they can just come, bring a motherfucker home. You ain't got to come out because nine times out of ten, your mama already know. And this what for the mamas on here, you especially your son. You know if your son gay or not. Whether they feminine, masculine, or whatever the case is, you know if your child is gay. So, like, why the fuck not just go ahead and create this space to where it's okay, baby? Like, let them know. Regardless of what you do, and it don't even have to be that awkward conversation. Are you gay? If you are, we love you. Just create those spaces and have those conversations ahead of time when it when we watching a TV show. Like, let them hear that. Baby, I don't give a fuck what you do. I love my church. Like, that shit makes a really, 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 really big difference. And that's why, like, and then I had a a conversation with some guys before, and they was like, you know, thinking that the whole gay family thing is something that's not needed, or they would laugh at guys and like, you know, what you doing in the gay family? Gay families were so fucking necessary because everybody's not blessed like I am. Like, my parents, my whole family, my mom and all their friends, like Nicole, everybody I see in the comments, like, all these motherfuckers love me. You know what I'm saying? And I know that. But a lot of people don't have that environment to where they can be themselves. Like, I don't have to walk in a room and worry about if I'm going to be found out or if I'm worried about traveling somewhere and, you know, I don't want to take a picture with these people because somebody going to know I'm gay. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, uh, Amy. Like, I said that earlier, like, a lot of girls are okay with hanging with gay guys. How the fuck you, like, as a kid, I would be so confused if my mom was like, hey, yeah, this choir director, Twan, and I'm I'm seeing Twan, they in the kitchen, girl, laughing, talking about men and all that shit. And then the kid come out, and it's a problem. I'm confused now. Because don't you love Twan? So what's the, what's the problem now? And I understand the initial disappointment of wanting grandkids. 
But I think my mama said this to me. She was like, even if you were straight, I don't think you have kids because, baby, I don't want no motherfucking jury. There's too, many, there's too much responsibility. And a bitch broke already taking care of me. But, you know, I think, like, DeMar's, my mama knew too. I didn't come in. My mama sat me down and was like, look here, stop fucking playing with me. Like, in, in a nutshell. <laughs> she was like, look here. But, yeah, but anyway, back to the gay families. I feel like gay families are so necessary because when mama put me out, I may have a friend that I met at the club or at my job or maybe a cousin or somebody I know that can sh- give me shelter and still give me that advice. But when my family, when my blood family has turned their backs on me. So I'm saying that for some of the gay people who look like the TV show Pose. You look at Pose and you're like, okay. This too much. They calling them mama. They calling them daddy. But what what can you call them when your mom and daddy has turned their backs on you? You know what I'm saying? What's what, what's the harm in that? Because most people that I've known who ha- like has problem with different type of gays are the church gays, and I can say this because I used to be one. Like I feel like a lot of church gays put up with so much that I think in retrospect that fear or that inc- uncomfortability that they experience when they see someone who's out and proud turns into, like, it comes out of their mouth as hate and uh, like a disdain for them. But I think in, like, in hindsight, it's really like, bitch, I really wish I could do that. Like, I really wish I can be that. The same thing with these Jadiel boyfriends hating your gay friend because they really wish they can be. <laughs> they really wish they could do that, you know? Uh, that's what I'm, Kathy Blanca was sickening, wasn't she? Nick, tell, tell Tammy. Shit, Tammy said she knew I she's been said it. But yeah, like, when it comes to, like, I, I have a Facebook friend, or I had a Facebook friend, he called his mom, it was around Thanksgiving, and he called her and was like, hey, I think it's really fucked up that you don't, that we don't talk to his mama now. His mama texted him back and said, who's this? Or it was a phone call. One or the other. It was still fucked up because you know who it is. You know what I'm saying? Whether you didn't hear a voice or not, you knew there was your fucking child. So I feel like when it comes to gay families, it's necessary because a lot of people would be so fucking lost and out in the streets without the help of a gay family. So, you know, it's just almost like you could be anything but gay. Like, there's a post that was out a couple years ago. Y'all might remember it. And she said, uh, if the post said, would you rather your son be a thug or gay? And people was like, neither. And I was like, that's cool. You know, I don't think anyone wants, you know, I don't think any parent, when they have kids, you know, you kind of pretty much become an architecture. Like, you kind of plan out every point of their life and, you, you know, those big pivotal moments that you want for your child. You want the best life possible for your child. But a part of me was okay with a parent saying neither because you're just being honest, and I appreciate the honesty. But I, what I didn't like was a post. How the fuck are you going to compare being a thug to being a homosexual? Like, I just felt like that was so... It was just bananas to me. It was almost like a thug is like, we know thugs out here killing Robin, that's bad. So it's like, what you rather have? Like, it's almost like you picking the lesser of two evils. And I, I just didn't appreciate that. But yeah, I just feel like a lot of people don't know how tough it is being gay in the black community because it's just, no, no parents want their child to walk in. <laughs> and Lisa's an idiot anyway. But there are plenty of gay thugs. I was I thought about that when I said gay or thug. But yeah, I feel like a lot of us need to be a little bit more compassionate and knowledgeable and allow yourself to learn uh new ideas and new ways of thinking. And Nicole, this is some simply fruit punch, and I pour like two shots of Patron in here, which I don't really taste the Patron, which I hadn't really been drinking it. But yeah, I just feel like you know, when you have your children just like, you know, just love them. Who like, like, I feel like I told my mom, I feel like it was more acceptable for me to come home and say, Hey, I'm an ex murderer. 
than a homosexual. They proved me wrong, but those were my thoughts and in in my feelings during that time, and it was valid because a lot of women just really don't really fuck with us like that. And, um, well, men too, but I wanted to talk to the women because I checked my demographics and most of my um, my audiences are women, so. But yeah, like all the exposing shit, I cut that out. That's tired. That shit gets you killed. And that's for the gays and the straights. All the DL exposing shit, these men will kill you. We call them Trey. Trey will kill you for all this telling their business because of they're not strong enough to live a life where they can be themselves. Some people are not strong enough. So make sure we're being compassionate. And just watch our words and watch what we're saying because a lot of this shit forces them back into the closet and back to hating themselves. And, yeah, and a lot of the – for the gay guys who don't like certain type of gays, check their self-hate. Get into Kind of dig into that shit and see what's wrong because, you know, you should be – for you to be a part of a community – it's almost like being a black person, but you don't want to go to the hood. But you, but you want to claim I'm black. You know, you you're too good to go certain places. No, Mm-mm. you got to make sure that you know what I'm saying. You're being compassionate. And you you're using your words <laughs> using your words wisely. But yeah, Derek Trey will shoot you. Will shoot you dead in your motherfucking face. So make sure that you're just being mindful of that. Like don't you know? Even if you if and I know a lot of us had that little trade fantasy when we were younger. If you feel like so I, you get too old for this shit to me, but, you know, if you feel like it's not going to work out in your favor, like I said last week, sometimes it's a side piece. You got to know your motherfucking place. And roll, know your role and shut your motherfucking mouth, Jabroni. Like if, you, if you're looking for love and this man has to hide you and you got to come over in a wig and all the, all the other silly shit, that man is not finna come outside with you. So know what, know what the fuck you're signing up for. So, But, yeah, I have one more question. Uh, Nicole, trade is like, say, for instance, if I wasn't out to to everybody, say, for instance, if I wasn't out to anybody, y'all know I'm masculine as fuck, bro. But um, say if I wasn't out to everybody and I decided to fuck with women, but I'm also fucking with guys on the side. That's kind of trade. Like some of y'all boyfriends that like hate gay guys or pretend to hate gay guys, that's trade. So. Yeah, but yeah, as long as you like straight presenting, that's the initial I, uh, the initial definition of trade. But like, we still use it. Like, if you come in the house and like, what's up, y'all? What's going on? We'll call a top trade these days, baby. It's a shortage. So it just all depends on, you know, how you define it. But to me, it's like a DL guy who maybe meet you on the app or some shit, or you got to meet them outside in the park, or basically trade to rob you and shoot you in the face. So be definitely, definitely be very, 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 very careful uh, with that. Yeah, down low. Same thing, but yeah, we just call them trade because you don't want to call them down low. You fucking right and get shot in the back and in the face, baby. But I want to ask this question before we go. I wrote this down, and um, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm going to be 100% honest about it. But this is Derek's all I take is a baseball cap. Baby, a fucking um, Bass Pro Shop hat <laughs> and an oversized T-shirt, baby, and you trade. You understand me? It's a shortage. It's a shortage. We're having for trade. Won't it? Young trade, single and free. Boom, 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 boom. Experience. Y'all know this song? Won't ass. Mary, Mary stole it and turned it into heaven. But it was, it's called Won't Ass, but it's an old school song. Y'all know I know how to type shit. But yeah, um, we're going to definitely have to continue this conversation again. But anyway, the question I had is, uh, can a man, do we can, I ain't going to say can because you can do the fuck you want to do. Do you consider a heterosexual man to remain heterosexual if he is attracted to trans women. And I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let that simmer. I'm gonna ask that again like we're on Jeopardy. Do you consider a straight man, heterosexual man, by definition, to still be heterosexual if he is attracted to a trans woman? woman trans woman is say for instance me and i go and i say i now identify as a woman 
and I get boobs in the surgery. You don't have to get the, you don't have to get your kitchen uh, gutted out if you don't want to. And uh, well, why y'all typing it? No, bitch, I wasn't molested. I wanted penis at a very, very young age, and those who know me know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. I got caught in the backyard with a little boy when I was like three. And my mom and I was trying to whoop him. And I said, uh-uh, mom, I asked him to let me do it. I was a free code, baby. <laughs> we was thinking out. We was through the gate. It, uh, we had like a little fence. We lived in a duplex. And he was on the other side of the duplex. Not beside us, but the other side of the duplex. And there was, a, there was a gate between us. And we would stick our wings through those holes. So I actually created glory holes. Y'all actually thank you. You're fucking welcome. I created glory holes, baby. So... Attracted, yes, because they trans women appear the same as a biological woman. Attracted, I'm, and I mean like sleeping with, I, okay, so what's his name? Malik Yoba. I don't know if it's actually true, but I did see it in the blogs. That Malik Yoba from, uh, was it, it's not New Jack City, New York Undercover, the TV show New York Undercover. Uh, he said that he was, uh, ain't it quiet, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it either. Uh, that's why I want to talk about it. So I think, um, he said he was trans attracted. He was attracted to, and I don't know, dating or having sex with. But yeah, I mean, do y'all think that it could be like, are they still considered straight? Derek said, I do. He's a few notches down the sexuality spectrum, but most of them want nothing to do sexually with the guy. Yeah. I just feel like a lot of people, um, a lot of, I don't want to keep, I feel like I'm picking on women, but. Uh, well, men too. A lot of men have a lot of ignorant ass ideas. Uh, my dad thinks that once a man touches a man, he's gay forever. Um, and like, <laughs> like most women, they're like, you know, she, you know, she mess off, but she can come get married and everybody crying and throwing the bouquet and doing electric slide and shit. But once a man touches a man, baby, you're gay. <laughs> it ain't no coming. It ain't no coming back. You know, it's it's crazy to me. Like it's it's crazy to me. Right, Sean, they they dragged him for that, but I'm just like, bitch, what's the who, what's the, I think everybody's so fucking nosy. So I think that's the problem too. But and the, like women get away with it and do it. Women can be freaky as they want to be, but like men don't care about women being gay. And I know I said this earlier. Men don't give a fuck about women exploring this, their sexuality, but women definitely give a fuck about a man exploring their sexuality. Because I still don't think y'all answered my question from earlier, but I'm gonna let it go. I think I heard crickets again that time too. When I asked y'all, can y'all, man, uh, I think y'all did. Some of y'all did answer it, but a lot of y'all didn't. And that was the main topic. But, uh, yeah. Kathy, and it's okay. And it's okay. I just, it's just something to process. You know, a lot of, we have a lot of new pronouns coming out and stuff. So a lot of people have to kind of, you know, take it all in. And there's some, lot of shit, you know, I'm gay. You know, a lot of shit I had to re, I had to relearn too. Don't fight me. But if I was a woman, that man wouldn't be the straight man for more. <laughs> And that's the thing, there ain't nobody judging nobody here. But a lot of women feel that way for certain reasons. Like, I feel like a lot of women feel like, oh, my man ain't a man because he has had sex with other men. You know? So. Which in turn, I guess you just rather not know. And I would respect that if a woman's like, you know what, I just don't want to fucking know. That's cool, too. You know, but I don't think it makes anyone less... Less than a man. Me too, Shine. When I was gay, when I first came out, it was LGBTQ. It was just LGBT, actually. Then we add the Q. Then we add the A. I mean the I. Then we add the A. And then we start doing algebra with the plus. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. You have pronouns. You have people that identify as they, them. That's a lot. So, you know. Say so, yeah, no. <laughs> But, yeah, Derek, I just feel like, you know, it's a lot of shit that's going on. A lot of people, you have your preference, but I just feel like this the hate rhetoric has to stop. And I think that's my issue. You can feel however the fuck you want to feel. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, I don't like, I don't find women attractive whatsoever. I'm allergic. I say that all the time. I'm allergic to two types of fish, tilapia and twat. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it in my church. It's tainted. <laughs> don't want it but at the same time though i really really i'll never like disrespect a black woman for being a black woman and that's what i just that's the whole purpose of my show tonight i just want people to kind of 
look at the shit we say and we do and kind of just kind of correct it and make the world a better place for everybody. Let everybody do what the fuck they want to do. Just say like that's that's not my business, baby. That's not my business. So, but yeah, I, again, I want to um, thank. What's up, Tina? I want to thank you guys again for tuning in to the Boy Please Whatever podcast. That's my sister, y'all. Uh, so, yeah, me too, Derek. I appreciate the beauty. I do not want to have sex with you. I might play with your titties, but I do not want to have sex with a woman. And, I, I, hey, I think it's amazing. Like, I look at your ass. I go to the strip club, put a few dollars in the G-Stream. You put it, puts it out. That's when I pass out. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in to the Boy Please Whatever podcast. I love you guys. Make sure you guys hit the share button. Go to the iP- uh, the iTunes, not iTunes, the podcast, the Apple Podcast app, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and Google Podcasts. If you have the Anchor app, I'm also on the Anchor app as well. I'm on YouTube as well. Make sure you go and subscribe. It's B- BPW901. Somebody's making noise in my background. It's picking all that up. Yep. Putting your ass out next week. I'm also looking for a roommate. Uh <laughs> Because <laughs> motherfucker thought it was thought it was nine and I was done. Now I ain't finished. But yeah, uh, thank y'all for tuning in, and I will see you guys on next Monday at eight p.m. sharp. You know, so peace out, people.